This is a video illustration of the 4-bit single bus simple as possible microprocessor designed by Matt Brown, Zoltan Rigo, James Smith, and Chris Spivey. This unit is comprised of 10 block units, the program counter, the memory address register, the RAM, the instruction register, the control sequencer, the A accumulator, the adder subtractor, the B register, the output register, and the binary display. Starting with the program counter, this device is made up of flip-flops and tri-state buffers. When the buffers are enabled, the program counter gives a high or a low output. When the buffers are disabled, the program counter produces a high Z output. The program counter counts from 0 to 15 in binary format. It also sends the address of the next instruction to be fetched. The MAR or memory address register permits the input of the f a 4-bit address and an 8-bit data piece into the RAM. During a microprocessor run, the address in the program counter is latched into the MAR. One bit later, the MAR applies this 4-bit address to the RAM where a read operation is performed. The RAM used in this microprocessor is a 16 by 8 static RAM. The RAM is programmed using the address and data switch registers, which enables it to store program and the data in the memory before run is performed. During a microprocessor run, the RAM receives 4 bit addresses from the MAR and a read operation is performed. Thus, the instruction and data stored in the RAM is placed on to the W bus. The next block of discussion is the instruction register. In this block, the contents of the instruction are split into two nibbles, which is 4 bits each. The upper nibble is a two-state output that goes directly to the control sequencer block, and the lower nibble is a three-state output that is read onto the W bus. The controller sequencer block is really what the microprocessor depends on. It is what's called the brain of the microprocessor. Now, before each microprocessor run, a clear signal is sent to the program counter and a clear signal is also sent to the instruction register. This resets the program counter to, to zero and wipes out the last instruction in the instruction register. Then a, a, clock sig a clock signal is sent to every buffer register. This synchronizes the operation of the microprocessor. The next block is the A accumulator. This has both a two-state output and a three-state output. The two-state output goes directly to the adder subtractor, and the three-state output goes onto the W bus. An 8-bit accumulator word continuously drives the adder subtractor. This comes from the A accumulator. The A accumulator is also a buffer register. It stores the immediate answers during a microprocessor run. The adder subtractor used in this device is a twos complement asynchronous adder subtractor. The contents of the adder subtractor change as soon as the input words change from the control sequencer. When SU is low, the sum out of the adder subtractor results in an addition. When SU is high, the difference appears resulting in a subtraction operation. The cont these contents appear on the W bus when the EU signal is high. The B register is very similar to the A accumulator. It is a buffer register used in arithmetic operations. A low LB signal and a positive clock edge loads the W bus onto the B register. The two-state output of the B register supplies the adder subtractor 
the number to be added or subtracted from the accumulator. The output register is what brings us to the final answer of the operation that this microprocessor is performing. At the end of a microprocessor run, the accumulator contains the answer to the problem being solved. When the EA signal is high and the LO signal is low, the next positive clock edge loads the accumulator word into. Lastly is the binary display. This is what outputs the answer to the outside world so that the user of the microprocessor can view the answer to his or her problem that they were performing on the microprocessor. Here is a working example of the 4-bit single bus microprocessor. This program takes the values 16, 20, and 24 and adds them up and then it subtracts the value of 32 from it and outputs the result. Are you this waveform diagram shows the program hex contents loaded into the RAM. The next waveform diagram is the load operation. You can see this by the value 10, which corresponds to the, va the first value 16 to be added from location 9. Moving on to the next diagram, we have the first add operation. This adds the value 14, which corresponds to the 20, from location A. Next, we have the second add operation, which adds the 18, which corresponds to the 24 in this program, from the memory location C of the program. Next is the subtraction operation. This is shown by the value 20, which corresponds to 32, being subtracted from the accumulator. And lastly, this is a complete program run shown from the full time 0 to 40 um, milliseconds.